Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about circulation. Now, in my busy Ayurvedic practice, I see many patients with slow or sluggish circulation. And as we state with all the diseases and symptoms that we treat, the underlying causes are usually numerous and they're different in each person. Circulation is something you want to address because if it gets too sluggish, you could suffer some consequences if you have lack of blood flow to an area. Many of us know that smoking cigarettes can affect our circulation as the nicotine in the cigarette smoke shrinks down our channels and arteries, decreasing the blood flow. The same thing happens when we eat the nightshade vegetables since they also contain nicotine. In fact, this is how I learned how to feel the channels in the pulse. My teacher, Vajra Ramakant Mishra, had me take my son's pulse. He was 10 years old at the time, and his pulse was beautiful and clear because he had an impeccable diet growing up and plenty of fresh air, sunshine, and exercise. Then my teacher had him eat some organic roasted potatoes that I cooked with Indian spices, cilantro, and lime. Within 10 minutes of eating them, Vajra told me to take his pulse again. I could feel all the physical channels had shrunken down, affecting not only the circulation of blood, but the circulation of all the other fluids in the body, including the channels that carry lymph, tears, sweat, and urine. So from that point on, I excluded potatoes from our diet and substituted taro root, which tastes exactly like a white potato. But I also learned how to feel the channels in the pulse, which was so exciting for me to finally be able to feel. In addition to eating the nightshade vegetables, our circulation can slow up by our sedentary lifestyle. Sitting all day long allows the blood to pool in the legs, so it's a good idea to get up and move around every so often. We also teach our patients to avoid foods which could shrink up the channels, clog them, harden them, and inflame them, because in all of these cases, the channels could become sluggish, which also affects our circulation. When we're under stress, we release cortisol, which shrinks our physical channels down and closes up our circulation as well. Luckily, we have lots of remedies to prevent the release of cortisol, and just as important, we have lots of therapies to open up these physical channels again. Which brings me to the next point. Ayurveda is loaded with all kinds of remedies, teas, transdermal creams, herbal and mineral baths to open up the channels. Many times, when we want to increase someone's circulation, we use thermogenic or heat-producing foods, spices and herbs, to open these channels up again, allowing circulation to flow. There is something we have treated since, this is something we have treated since antiquity in Ayurveda. Here is where my teacher added new treatment modalities and approaches to accommodate the changes to our physiology in this modern era. He felt that in this day and age, we're now loaded with hot toxins, since we have surrounded ourselves with over 80,000 chemicals within the air, food, soil, water, pharmaceuticals, skincare products, and on and on and on. And the problem is that many of these toxins are extremely hot, causing a tremendous amount of heat to circulate throughout our bodies. Now here's where the problem lies. This is what my teacher encountered. There were many times when we wanted to open up a channel, but the channels were too inflamed and hot, so we could no longer use the thermogenic or heat-producing herbs and treatments to promote circulation when it was impaired. Here were some of the obstacles we were up against. In some cases, we wanted to open up the circulation to the optic nerve to prevent all the common eye conditions that we hear about. But the problem we encountered is that the eyes are a pitta organ, sensitive to light and heat, so if you want to increase the circulation here, you can't use hot therapies. And then sometimes we wanted to treat our MS patients and those patients with demyelinating diseases where the myelin sheath, which is the covering to the nerve, was being burnt for various reasons from toxins both internal and external to the body. In these cases, we also couldn't use hot therapies to open up the inflamed channels. We wanted to treat varicose veins, but the blood circulating through the veins was so hot, causing them to bulge, we knew we couldn't use heat to open up the flow through these hot and inflamed veins. These are just a few of the examples of the obstacles which were presented to us as our patients harbored their hot amavisha and garvisha, two types of toxins which are highly inflammatory. These two types of toxins are responsible for causing both autoimmune diseases and cancer, due to the heat they contain and the inflammation they cause. 
And on top of that, most of our patients work on computers all day, exposing themselves to yet another type of hot inflammatory toxin known as EMFs or EMRs, electromagnetic frequencies and electromagnetic radiation. This type of toxin is agnea, or hot and fiery, and it's also responsible for many of the inflammatory auto autoimmune conditions and cancers that we hear about. So what to do? Fortunately, Vija always thought long and hard about the obstacles that we encountered during our two decades of seeing patients together. And he came up with his own unique way of opening up the channels without using heat, which is unheard of. He developed many transdermal creams, which gave us the capability of applying the creams right to the areas of the weak circulation, whether it was around the eyes, into the brain, on the extremities, and just about anywhere around the body where the circulation was impaired. Keep in mind, low circulation is responsible for making us feel dizzy because there's less blood flow up into the head. If the blood circulates too slow, you can have a heart attack or a stroke as the blood coagulates due to its slow movement. And if there's lack of blood flow to any organ or gland, whether it's the kidneys, the optic nerve, the reproductive glands, or anywhere, that organ or gland's function becomes impaired. This is why it's so critical to treat circulation as part of any patient's protocol. And rest assured, we can treat it whether you're harboring hot toxins or not. And finally, think of this. If you have cardiac myopathy where the heart muscle is weak, making it hard for the heart to deliver blood to the body, you definitely want to open up the channels of circulation in the arms and legs, making it easier for the heart to do its job. This is yet one more example of how my teacher helped me and his other doctors treat our patients in this modern era, going beyond the normal treatments recommended by the ancient texts, since many of these types of toxins weren't around when those texts were written. Fortunately, my teacher upgraded Ayurveda for the modern era, which the ancient doctors highly recommended in their text, as they knew they wouldn't be able to foresee what types of problems would happen in the future. Thank you.